A big shakeup this evening in the Ukrainian military. President Zelensky says he'll replace his defense minister, saying the ministry needs, quote, new approaches. Let's discuss. You know, military analyst and retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling joins us now. General, as you just heard, Zelensky is replacing his defense minister. What do you make of this move? This has been bubbling for a couple of days, Jim. Uh, the defense ministry has been accused of of uh, actually having uh, several issues regarding corruption. Most recently, it had to do with winter uniforms. It's really unfortunate because uh, Minister Reznikov, who is the one is being relieved, is first of all, a, a very good friend of the West. Him and Secretary Austin have established a great relationship. He is a very good man, but truthfully, in the past, in dealing with Ukraine, corruption within the government, corruption within the ministries, has it's been a major problem. Uh, President Zelensky ran on eliminating corruption. He has done a very good job in the last couple of years, but there is still a little bit of a co uh, culture of that kind of corruption within the government of Ukraine, and many people don't really know about that. And, and could there be a battlefield impact from all of this? I see that uh, Zelensky is nominating Rustem Umarov to become the new defense minister. Uh, any thoughts on him? And uh, what do you think the impact of this is going to be? Yeah, Umarov is, has been in the government for the last couple of years. He was born in Uzbekistan. He has been in uh, Ukraine since uh, long before the war started, actually the first war. And he, he evidently is a very good man. Uh, but as I said a minute ago, corruption used to be rampant, not only in the ministries, but in the military. So to answer your question, will this affect the military itself? I don't think so in terms of the fighting forces. I had a conversation with a group of soldiers in 2016 that had just come back from the Donbass, and they told me that was their biggest concern, that their generals and their colonels were corrupt. I don't think we see that anymore in the Ukrainian military. They are fighting hard, but like, like many governments throughout the world, inside of various ministries, there are individuals who will take advantage of these unfortunate situations for Ukraine and grift uh, off of uh, the, the prices that are allocated toward fund that are actually contributing to the military. Mm. And, you know, General, Ukraine says it is focusing on consolidating battlefield gains as Ukrainians and uh, U.S. officials uh, push back on these counteroffensive, um, I guess, criticisms that the counteroffensive is moving too slowly. What, what is your sense of uh, Ukraine's progress, the counteroffensive? Um, might a new defense minister help in that regard? Well, I'll start off by simply saying, Jim, the Ukrainian offensive has been uh, good. They have made, uh, they have succeeded in many fronts. It is going slower than some would like. I'm not one of those because I understand how difficult what the Ukrainian army is facing on the battlefield with just massive strewn mines across the front. But it's also, for me, a, a little bit distasteful for anyone who's not on the battlefield or within uh, the military of Ukraine to make comment about how fast or slow they're going. Truthfully, Jim, I experienced the same thing in combat in Iraq when others would say, hey, you're not doing enough or you're not doing this. It's a whole lot tougher uh, to, to actually do the things that people uh, want you to do than it is for soldiers who are fighting their hardest. And in fact, in the case of Ukraine, dying uh, in, in, and being wounded on the front. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm with uh, the, uh, Minister Kaleba, who said earlier in the week that people who are basically slamming Ukraine for the pace of their uh, their operations should just, and his words, not mine, shut up. But I agree mm -hmm. with that completely. If you're not on the front lines, if you're not carrying a rifle, you probably should not be uh, from the Pentagon or other places, from NATO headquarters, be talking about how, in, especially in an anonymous way, how slow the, uh, the effort is going. Well, yeah, I mean, we're heading into the fall of 2023. Uh, a lot of folks at the beginning of all this never thought Ukraine would have an offensive period, uh, let alone a, a counteroffensive. So, I mean, they're, they're all, in some ways, they're battling against um, expectations that have been raised. Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting, Jim, at the beginning of the war, as you remember, a lot of people were saying, hey, how come the Americans thought the Russians were 10 feet tall? They can't do a lot of the things that you're supposed yeah. to do on a battlefield. Now, those same critics are saying, how come uh, Ukraine isn't, uh, they seem to be 10 feet tall. How come they're not doing the things we anticipate them doing? Well, it's because 
conditions on the battlefield really determine how fast or how slow you get. And, and when you're talking about an offensive across a four to 600 kilometer front, which is what Ukraine yeah. is attempting to do, it's very difficult, especially when you've got new weapons, new commanders. This is the first time you've done this. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's it's very difficult. And we should allow them to continue to fight the way they think they need to fight. All right. Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, great to talk to you as always. Appreciate it.